Hey everyone, this is Dominic from the Comic Book Report YouTube channel, doing another guest review for OrganicPriceBooks.com. And today, we're diving into a compendium edition today with Jeff Lemire's Sweet Tooth Compendium from DC Comics. The issues in this volume were written and illustrated by Jeff Lemire. The issues themselves were first published beginning in 2009 by DC Comics' imprint at the time, Vertigo. The compendium itself collects the entirety of the main Sweet Tooth series with Sweet Tooth issues 1 through 40, and the whole collection is 920 pages. It is a standard size paperback, which means it's about the dimensions of just your standard trade paperbacks, just obviously bulkier because of all of those issues. The paper stock is a kind of matte paper, though it is pretty nice, and it has a glued binding, which I'll show you momentarily. But first, let's take a better look at all the covers on this book. So this is the front cover, of course, for that Sweet Tooth Compendium, which I believe is kind of a mock-up of the first issue. Very cool to see. It really sells the series and the art style you can expect on the inside of this collection. Here's a good look at the spine of the Sweet Tooth Compendium. Really like the image we have on the side above the actual title of the book. Really cool. I of course love that they retain the same font for Sweet Tooth as we see on the cover and the covers of all the issues. Just a nice touch that looks good on the bookcase. And finally we have the back cover. It retains that kind of flannel background which I really like. We get a picture of the, some of the characters here. Again some blurbs about the book, a brief synopsis, and just different information. Everything's pretty standard here. Now I want to go ahead and take a closer look at that glued binding. I'm sure a lot of people have questions about this. I know for myself, this held really well for my first read-through. I read this thing cover to cover, and it's held up very, very nicely. I'll do another quick look at the spine in a moment so you can see there's no real visible wear, even reading this entire thing through. One quick note, that Netflix logo here is not a sticker. It is part of that front cover as well. As for the binding, I do want to go back and look at the spine here. As you can see, I don't have any lines here, no cracking, nothing like that. Reading this thing all the way through, there were times I pushed the pages down, and like I said, I opened and closed this book quite a bit over the few weeks it took me to read it, and there's no breaking or visible signs of real wear here, which is encouraging for the future and longevity of this compendium. And now, as you can see, obviously, I'm doing a little bit of a size comparison between this compendium and an oversized hardcover, in this case, the Flash Mark Wade Omnibus I have here. So again, this is a standard size collection, which means it's the same dimensions as a trade paperback or a single issue comic, unlike omnibuses or absolutes or certain deluxe collections that are going to be oversized. So this just gives you a look at what you can expect as far as the size differential. And with all the mechanics of this book out of the way, we can dive into the collection proper, and I can give you a brief overview of Jeff Lemire's Sweet Tooth. I really like that this collection begins, as so many do, with a title page, publication information, but also a table of contents. In this case, the table of contents breaks it down basically by story arc. I think that each of these essentially map to one of the trade paperback volume collections, which is kind of nice to see how it breaks it down across the table of contents. There are page numbers periodically, throughout this volume where it doesn't interfere with the art so it's a great way to keep track of where you are in the series and i really like that as an added touch we also have all of the covers for the issues present at the beginning of the subsequent issues which i think is a nice touch as well i think sometimes with these big extended editions compendiums things like that it's not always a given that we're going to get the covers included so having them at the beginning of each issue throughout the sweet tooth compendium was a much appreciated choice from the dc publisher Essentially, what Sweet Tooth is about, this entire collection, at a bird's eye kind of overview, is that basically it is set in kind of a dystopian future, or even present, where basically there's been this plague that has ravaged the world, that has killed off a huge percentage of the world's population. Those that have survived know that they are kind of on borrowed time, as no human is immune to this sickness. Everyone has it, and it's just a matter of when you will show symptoms and ultimately succumb. Coinciding near the beginning of the plague as well is the appearance of these kind of hybridized creatures that are part animal and part human that are birthed to human parents. Their appearance is relatively inexplicable, we just know it's happening and it happened around the time of this plague. Leading the kind of vestiges of humanity to speculate and wonder if the hybrids have a role in this sort of plague that's wiped out so much of the population. 
It is within this backdrop that this whole story is set. We follow the primary hero of our tale, Gus, who is this hybrid boy-deer creature. And basically, he's living in a small cabin with his father, trying to avoid the woes of the world. To say he's lived kind of a sheltered existence would be an understatement, but that's essentially where we find our hero. The character of Gus is soon paired with this character known as the Big Man, who we'll later know to be Jeopard. The two of them kind of have an interesting dynamic at first. It's not super trusting, it's a little interesting, and basically he's just this big brutish man that is sort of working for his own ends and his own means. The two of them have a relationship that, though it is turbulent, it really does evolve into something more akin to a father-son relationship. And this really serves as the main dramatic core of the series. There is a kind of father-son dynamic, like I mentioned earlier. It feels very Lone Wolf and Cub or Mandalorian for contemporary watchers of that series. There's just this dynamic there as they kind of make their way to find where Gus truly came from. This whole book is sort of this exodus as they try to figure out how to get to where they need to go to find out the origins of this character. Along the way, they really kind of accumulate this kind of ragtag group of figures, both human and hybrid, and they encounter some dastardly villains that are just really wicked and evil. Before I started reading this series, I heard someone have a blurb about the series as a whole, basically saying it's a cross between Bambi and Cormac McCarthy's The Road. And if you're familiar with both of those properties, I think it's fair to say that that is the most succinct and accurate kind of comparison I could ever make for a series like this. It is very, very bleak, very, very intense. There is kind of this sort of travel narrative here of... And in the midst of that, we somehow have these kind of sweet animal-like characters. There is still absolutely glimmers of hope and compassion within this really dark world and amidst these truly horrendous circumstances. The story has a lot of great twists and turns that I won't spoil here for any of those that want to read this for themselves. As far as the art direction goes, like I mentioned, everything was illustrated by Jeff Lemire, who I will admit, when I first started reading, I was not overly impressed by this art style. It seemed very sharp, crude, sketchy, and kind of scratchy looking. But about midway through the book, something kind of miraculous happened as I started to view this artwork as how it served the narrative as a whole, and I think that it was so fitting for the storytelling they were doing. I think it absolutely achieved those kind of feelings and tones of sort of hopelessness and just bleak, bleak, moody kind of atmosphere. Really well done. And by the end of the collection, I was floored. I really do consider Lemire a good artist. You just have to know what kind of style you're getting with a book like this. But again, already looking back now that I've finished this series, I can say that the art absolutely served the purpose and really helped me feel so immersed in this world and in the characters and all the conflicts they would make their way through. I also mentioned at the beginning that this contains the full Sweet Tooth series, and while that is true, I do know that Jeff Lemire came back to do kind of a spin-off or sort of sequel event thing called Sweet Tooth The Return. I know that there's at least a single paperback collection released for that. I don't know if they're going to be doing any more. I know that this can be viewed as something totally self-contained, but The Return does exist. I have not read that yet, but this is all the main series proper. I'm happy to say it has a really good beginning, middle, and conclusive ending. So for those interested in reading kind of a one-and-done, standalone story for the most part, I think you can enjoy this compendium without the need to really look elsewhere. I think for fans of comic book series like The Walking Dead, there actually might be something for you within the pages of Sweet Tooth. I know it might not look it, but there are a lot of similarities. We're in this kind of dystopian future where it really is about the characters overcoming a truly tragic and devastated world and finding that sometimes the remnants of humanity are sometimes the worst evil they can face. And I think we see a lot of parallels like that within this story as well. So if you enjoy Robert Kirkman's The Walking Dead, this might be a kind of unexpectedly good resource for you as well as a fun piece of entertainment. I know for me it was maybe a touch darker than most comics I tend to read these days, but Lemire had a lot of really purposeful moments throughout this series, and I felt myself just being totally captivated by these characters. I think the payoffs that you get throughout the book are really well earned, because like I said, you have to wade through a lot of 
bleak kind of situations. I will say there is a lot of violence, blood, profanity throughout this book as well. I wouldn't consider this something that really young readers maybe should pick up. I think it's rated mature or, you know, elder teens or the kind of the recommended age group, and I definitely see why. One maybe downside about this compendium is that there really is no extras at the back of the book. We maybe have a cover or two and some promotional images, but other than that, it's really just the book itself with all the issues. But honestly, that's kind of what you come for, and I think this compendium has a lot to offer. And that's really going to do it for my quick overview of Sweet Tooth by Jeff Lemire. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you're interested in more reviews from me, Dominic, you can check out my channel, The Comic Book Report. And for all of your comic book buying needs, of course, stop by OrganicPriceBooks.com. Thank you so much. See ya.